I'll be discussing the Alpine study today. By way of background, we know that Bruton tyrosine kinase inhibition in CLL has been transformative of its therapy because B cell receptor signaling is required for tumor expansion and proliferation in CLL and B cell lymphomas, and that B cell receptor signaling is dependent on BTK. Abrutinib is the first in class covalent BTK inhibitor, which did transform CLL therapy, but has properties that limit its use, particularly treatment discontinuation from toxicities, with discontinued rates of 16 to 23 percent across many studies. Also, exposure coverage between the dosing intervals falls below the IC50, and variable BTK occupancy at trough has been observed. Xanabrutinib is a second-generation bruton tyrosine kinase inhibitor designed to have greater BTK specificity than abrutinib and to maintain exposure coverage above its IC50 throughout the dosing interval. This higher drug concentration to IC50 ratio would be expected to lead to more sustained and complete BTK inhibition, which could potentially improve efficacy. Previously, xanabrutinib has demonstrated superior progression-free survival by IRC over chemoimmunotherapy in treatment-naive CLL-SLL patients without deletion 17P. And here we are presenting the out results of the Alpine study in which xanabrutinib demonstrates superior progression-free survival compared with abrutinib in relapsed refractory CLL. This study enrolled patients with relapsed refractory CLL-SLL with at least one prior therapy and measurable lymphadenopathy. Key exclusion criteria included prior BTK inhibitor therapy and treatment with warfarin or other vitamin K antagonists, although other anticoagulants were permitted. Patients were randomized one-to-one -one between xanabrutinib 160 milligrams twice per day or abrutinib 420 milligrams daily until disease progression or unacceptable toxicity. The randomization was stratified by age, geographic region, refractoriness, and deletion 17P or P53. The primary endpoint was overall response rate, non-inferiority, and superiority by investigator, which has been previously met in the interim and final analyses. The key secondary endpoint of progression-free survival is now presented. 652 patients were randomized, 327 to xanabrutinib and 325 to abrutinib. You can see that only three patients on the xanabrutinib arm and one on the abrutinib arm were not treated. At time of data cutoff, 86 patients had discontinued on xanabrutinib versus 134 on abrutinib. This is balanced between adverse events and progressive disease, with 53 patients stopping for adverse events on xanabrutinib compared to 74 with abrutinib, and 24 stopping for progressive disease on xanabrutinib versus 42 with abrutinib. At this time, treatment is ongoing for 73% of xanabrutinib patients and 58% of abrutinib patients. Here you can see the progression-free survival curve by IRC with a median follow-up of 29.6 months, demonstrating that xanabrutinib is significantly superior to abrutinib with a hazard ratio of 0.65. The two-year landmark estimated PFS is 79.5% with xanabrutinib versus 67.3% with abrutinib, and very similar results were seen by investigators. In our highest risk subgroup of disease, patients with deletion 17P or P53 mutation, which was a pre-planned analysis, we see an even larger difference with the 77.6% two-year landmark PFS in xanabrutinib versus 55.7% two-year landmark PFS in abrutinib. The median treatment duration was 28 months with xanabrutinib and 24 months with abrutinib. Overall safety was improved with xanabrutinib with serious adverse events reduced with xanabrutinib, and adverse events leading to dose reduction, dose interruption, and treatment discontinuation, all lower with xanabrutinib compared to abrutinib. We focus particularly on the cardiac profile, in which xanabrutinib had fewer serious cardiac adverse events at 1.9% versus 7.7% with abrutinib, and fewer cardiac adverse events leading to treatment discontinuation, one with xanabrutinib versus 14 with abrutinib. Atrial fibrillation occurred in 5% of patients on the abrutinib arm versus 13% on the xanabrutinib arm. There were no fatal cardiac events in patients treated with a xanabrutinib versus six events in patients treated with abrutinib, which was 1.9% in the abrutinib arm. In conclusion, xanabrutinib demonstrated superior progression-free survival over abrutinib in patients with relapsed refractory CLL 
and this PFS benefit was seen across all major subgroups, including the deletion 17P, P53 mutant population. Xanabrutinib has a favorable safety profile compared with abrutinib, with lower rates of grade three or higher in serious adverse events, fewer adverse events leading to treatment discontinuation and dose reduction. Xanabrutinib also has a better cardiac profile than abrutinib, with lower rates of atrial fibrillation, serious cardiac events, cardiac events leading to treatment discontinuation, and fatal cardiac events. Alpine is the first study to demonstrate progression-free survival superiority in a head-to-head -head comparison of BTK inhibitors in patients with relapsed refractory CLL-SLL. Xanabrutinib has now proven superiority to abrutinib in both progression-free survival and overall response rate. Thank you for your attention.